Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver and my guest today is Greg Bourne. He is the co-founder and executive director of Lead for Tomorrow. Our topic is an organization that is doing a great deal for the world. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, Lynn. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about Lead for Tomorrow. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the mission Absolutely. that you have? Absolutely. Yes. So uh, we began Lead for Tomorrow. We started it in the end of uh, 2011. So we've been around for about nine years now. We built off of a great program in the Hawaiian Islands that was focused on parenting. Now, we did that because as we began Lead for Tomorrow, we were thinking about the future and the future of our society, the future of our communities, the future of our families. We really believe that if we're going to have healthy societies, we need healthy communities, and that begins with having healthy families. Yes. And we see so much unfortunate dysfunction and challenges uh, today in families and in communities. We designed then some programs to try to address these concerns. When we first began uh, thinking about more peaceful and healthy societies, we thought about when do you need to really start this work? You can't just be looking at the problems that we encounter, but what's the genesis? And we realized that what happens from birth to five is the most important really time yes. in a child's life. Yes. 85 plus percent of brain development occurs in that time. Yes. So we felt that if we could start with families with young children, we could help them hopefully create a better environment, a more nurturing environment for their kids, which then helps them to be better adjusted and contributors to their communities, which then builds to healthier societies. And that's really our mission. Yep. Uh, strong uh, families, sound families, caring communities, and a healthy, healthier, more peaceful world. Well, it's a wonderful enterprise and a, 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 a very, very worthwhile and timely um, uh, mission. So thank you for that. But I know that you have an impressive background, and so I would like to know a little more uh, the road okay. uh, that lead or led to to this uh, new enterprise? Well, life is interesting, you know, and if you had asked me 10 years ago, or not, actually not 10, but 15 years ago, yes. if I'd be in the nonprofit world working in this arena, I would have uh, had to scratch my head to think about that. For 30 but isn't it wonderful? It is wonderful. It's uh, a whole new, um, you know, world and landscape, but it's, it is, it's terrific. I've spent much of my career with universities. I was at the Georgia Institute of Technology for a few years. Mm -hmm. After that, I was affiliated with a program um, that was uh, housed at Sac State mm -hmm. and more recently uh, uh, some programs at UC Davis. So I've spent a lot of my career in some way affiliated with academic institutions, but I've also been a consultant to local government, state, national government, you know, and some international work as well. So it's been a blessing to be able to work mm -hmm. at these different levels of government and society and working with people across the socioeconomic uh, spectrum. Um, and so it's, it's, it's been what I think of as a living laboratory because I'm always learning, or at least trying to learn, uh, how to connect with people in a more effective way and to try to solve problems in a more effective way. So for about 30 years, I was a mediator, and st I still do some of this work, uh, in the public policy arena. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting, yes. Yeah, and, and about 10, uh, well now about 12 years ago, I was invited to help facilitate a meeting in the Hawaiian Islands mm -hmm. to uh, look at how to create a, a safer world. And it, while it was not directly involved with my work mediating public policy disputes, I thought this would be fascinating. And so what that led to was helping to start a nonprofit uh, from that work, which led to kind of the next generation lead for tomorrow. So that was the single uh, event that inspired you? I think so, yeah. I'm surprised that Hawaii doesn't have safe, safe societies or 
that that was, oh, you just happened to be there. It just happened to be there. Yeah. It, the, um, that particular conference uh, was initiated by a professor emeritus at the University of Hawaii who had written a book called Non-Killing Societies. Oh, and how he wonderful. Was, he was making a point that 99 plus percent of human beings have never killed another human being. So it really is not just kind of a natural inclination, in fact, quite the contrary. Sure. And um, because he was there and this was an international conference of leaders from 45 different countries, mm -hmm. um, that's really how it began in Hawaii. It's very interesting. Now, there is, um, you mentioned, uh, by the way, uh, Lead for Tomorrow, uh, if you'd like to know more about all the programs of this uh, organization, uh, you can go to their website, uh, which is www.leadfortomorrow.org. And you'll probably see it display uh, on, on our screen. Um, there is something that um, triggered my curiosity when I was reading about mm -hmm. you and your company. And mm -hmm. you mentioned that um, Lead for Tomorrow advocates a new model of leadership. And okay. of course, I was intrigued, <laughs> and I wanted to know what, well, <laughs> what is the new model yeah. of leadership. Well, I'm not sure there I are I don't any... mean to put you on the spot. No, 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 no problem. I'm not sure there are really any new models of leadership, mm. but it's the, as you know, there are numerous l books on leadership. And a lot of times it's repackaging and changing the terminology Absolutely. of work that's been done in the yes. past. So <laughs> perfect for going to sleep sometimes. <laughs> exactly. But we have three programs within Lead for Tomorrow. One is our Family Hui Positive Parenting Program. Yes, and One, I'm going to ask you a little more about exactly. that. Exactly. And the other, another is our East Africa Initiative. Mm -hmm. And the other, our third leg of the stool is our uh, what we call Community Leadership Program. Mm -hmm. And through this program, we really try to impact leadership from the local neighborhood all the way up to elected officials to mm -hmm. try to support more open, transparent uh, interaction between mm -hmm. communities and the leaders mm -hmm. and help leaders have a better sense of how to connect to the community in a transparent and genuine way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of public involvement is often check the box, we need to do this. I think over the years, Many elected officials have seen the value of genuine public involvement to help yes. shape societies and shape communities. And so we promote a style of leadership we call facilitative leadership. Interesting. And the idea is to, and there's a lot of research behind this, and it's really an integration of various kinds of leadership thinking mm -hmm. and research. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to realize the potential in the people that you're working with yes. and try to pull out their leadership capacity and build their capacity to uh, basically make an impact on mm -hmm. their own and recognize that everybody mm -hmm. has opportunities to exert leadership, whether it's a parent in your family or being on the PTA and, and helping make your school stronger, uh, all the way up to being an elected official. So. Well, you know, that's very interesting because I think philosophically um, uh, that's... Uh, uh, knowing or believing that human beings are born and are profoundly good. It's only, you know, being deviated by bad habits yeah. or um, abuse or uh, uh, simply being copycats. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the leadership is very, very important mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, for that. Do you give classes or do you, do you teach uh, we, this, we, we this do. model? We do. We yeah. do. Um, currently, we're doing some work for F First Five Sacramento. They give small community cooperation grants to neighborhood leaders who think, uh, who identify. I've heard of, of them. Yeah, yeah, they identify an issue in their community. And then First Five Sac gives small grants and we train mm -hmm. or support, I think is a better way of saying it. Yeah. We support the community leaders who are identified through the re as recipients of, of these grants. Well, that's a wonderful initiative because very often the community leaders are, are isolated from, um, from the political sphere and the, the higher ups mm -hmm. and the ones who make decisions mm -hmm. and so on. So that's great. Tell us a little bit about uh, the HUI foundation and programs. Okay. I know that it's a sort of like a subset of your 
lead for tomorrow, isn't Correct. that? Yes, and they have their own website. We do, But yes. you can get to them uh, by uh, going to Lead for Tomorrow. Correct, Yes. correct. Family Hui, when we first started Lead for Tomorrow, and as I mentioned earlier, we thought about how can we begin making the greatest impact. It just so happened, because I was in Hawaii at the time working a lot, that there was a program there called Baby Hui, which had been operating for many years. Yes. And so we had, to make a long story short, an opportunity to acquire that program. And when we did, we expanded the age range to birth to five years old so we could include school preparedness. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to that, we've added resilience into the program. Since we brought it to California in 2014, we've incorporated resilience based on all the work that's being done in the last several years on trauma and the impact especially of uh, adverse childhood experiences or ACEs. Yeah. And so we find that a lot of parents are carrying some of their childhood trauma with them. And so if we can interrupt patterns of potential dysfunction by helping parents see their own challenges and becoming more resilient, they can then pass that to their children. Well, that's very interesting. And there's a lot of research going on about manipulating um, memories and traumatic mm, experiences mm -hmm. to um, to cure in that's some ways. Uh, so, but uh, and the program in Africa, uh, in East Africa, I believe. Right. Yeah. And we're working in four countries in East Africa. Four countries. Four Which countries: ones? Tanzania, Uganda. Those two primarily. Yes. And also Kenya and Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And we picked that area because we have, from our previous work that I mentioned in Hawaii, we we knew people in that part of the world who we could partner with. And our model of doing international work is that we work with partners on the ground who we trust, who we can have a working relationship mm -hmm. with, and build on the assets that are there. Mm -hmm. um, we're very much not a part of these programs where you helicopter in and try to help people solve the problems that we identify, <laughs> right? We're trying to work with local communities, local leaders, and yeah. support them where we can. And so we were invited in a few years ago to bring our positive parenting program. Subsequent to that, we've added some of our community leadership programs. Mm -hmm. We've added work to, once you've gone through our positive parenting modules, yes. then learn how to start a small business, to generate nutrition for the family, income, and create more of a, a nurturing environment for families. Where do you see Lead for Tomorrow um, go in the future? Do well, you have some strategies that you'd like to share for, for us? Well, I think our programs try to have a personal touch to them. We're not going to necessarily put thousands of people through our positive parenting program. We're more likely to really focus on the people that are in the program and really make sure that they're benefiting from the program. And the yes. same is true in, in Africa. So we, but we do envision taking Family Hui to more states in mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we do see our community leadership program also can stretch mm -hmm. around and then integrating those into international work. And we already have potential possibilities to work in other places internationally, but believe you need to really take it slowly and make sure that we're culturally relevant and that our programming that it's done you know, meets well. Exactly. Yes. exactly. And of course, I'm going to ask you about your fundraising efforts. I'm sure that uh, it's a continuous uh, it, effort. It is. Yeah. And uh, I think this has been the one challenge for me personally, coming from the private sector and a yes. university setting into the nonprofit world. Yes. And um, <clears throat> so we, fortunately we have a, a major grant from the Office of Child Abuse Prevention here in the state of California. Well, that's wonderful. And that is, Congratulations. You know, really helped us, you yes. know, move forward. And we're and, always and looking to build a down And does base. it have string attached, meaning you can only use it uh, in California or? Yes, it's yes. primarily to help create a parent leadership network um, yes. to work for preventing child abuse and neglect. Yeah, yeah. And so otherwise, though, as we can build a donor base from people who think what the work we're doing is important, then it allows us more flexibility to expand into some of the other areas. Well, I'm afraid our time is up. It's incredible how 15 minutes, <laughs> when you really have an interesting topic, they, it goes very fast. So. 
Thank you so much, Greg Bourne, for being here, for taking a little time out of your day uh, to talk to, uh, to us in the studio. And thank you all for watching. Uh, you can see this program again, uh, this episode again, uh, when you go, you can stream it actually, when you go to our website, dctv.davismedia.org. And while you're there, you can check some of our other, our other programs. We have um, many interesting topics and fabulous guests. So from all of us here at Davis Media, thank you for watching and see you again soon.